Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. I'm in front of the lake. I want to share with you something cool I got in for the TL70 today. And that was actually the lens kit by Mint Camera. Now these are the neutral density filter lenses. I'm going to share with those for you later in an unboxing. I wanted to get this one up and running for you before I go to a wedding today that I will be shooting later. And of course the TL70 is going to be coming along with me and getting the lens kit Today, the day of a wedding I'm shooting is great because I would like to produce some images with this from outside and how cool will that be? I'm just so very, very excited. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm gonna switch the camera around and you're gonna see that perspective and you might see my hands coming through to share with you how these lenses work. All right, friends, now we've turned the camera around. I'm actually recording this on the LG G6 that is a cell phone. I'm using the manual mode and I want to share with you what the lens kit will do. Now, I want to tell you some settings and recognize I understand that there's a difference in between digital to analog for between film and digital. So this is not talking about the difference in conversion. Just recognize I'm talking about how we're going to use the neutral density filters. Also, if these were camera sensors that were digital, the fact that this is a smaller sensor on the image that you're seeing now compared to a larger sensor in something like an APS-C or a full frame camera would also come into play in some of the calculations. However, the end result is what I'm trying to get you to understand and what I'm trying to share with you. So without any consideration for those things, let's move right into it. Okay, so right now I want to let you know that the camera has a wide aperture of uh, f2.0 um, actually, excuse me, 1.8, that's the aperture on this lens, and it can't go any larger, okay, and it can't get any smaller, right, which means that we're having to work within the constraints of the camera. Right now, I'm at ISO 50, 50 at 1 500th of a shutter speed, and as the light conditions are changing when the uh, clouds come along, you can see different things happening. Now, what I want to do is I want to share with you, I'm going to bump this up to ISO 800 and just show you what it looks like at 800 at 1 five hundredth of a second. Do you see that? It is completely and totally blown out. And that is very important because the film on your TL70 is ISO 800. Think about that now. That's how bright this film is. One more time, I'm going to show you what I would usually shoot at. ISO 50 or 100 is the film speed I would normally use when shooting film. Uh, and you have those choices when you're buying something like Portra or Pro 400H. But Instax film is only sold at ISO 800, so this is the starting off point for your TL70 when you're at doors. Except you can gate it down a little bit to an aperture of f22, which I cannot change. Keeping that in mind, if I change the shutter speed, look what happens when I go to 1 200th of a second, which I'm at right now. But compare that to 1 32 hundredth of a second. So you see now that faster and sl slower shutter speeds affect things differently. And that's very important. Let's go ahead and put it back on the max shutter speed of the TL70, which is 1 500th of a second. When you go outdoors and you take photos and they come out whitewashed like this, it's real simple. It's because the scene is much, much brighter than what the camera can show. Here, I'm going to share with you one way to get around that. Now, keeping in mind that the sky up there is really blown out, right? We recognize that this scene, even though there's a little shadow over top of us, is about a 13 or 14 EV. Instax film only has about 10 EV of tonal range that it can show. Maybe 12, maybe a little bit more, but I doubt it. My experience has been showing up to about 10 stops. And that's important because, and this scene being a metering, at about a 13 or 14 EV, we know that it's going to show us something blown out. So we have to manage that when we're photographing. Here, I'm gonna show you an ND filter. Okay, I'm gonna show you what a one-stop ND filter looks like, and that's rated in ND2. And I want you to see what happens when I put this up there. Notice immediately how we're able to gain quite a bit of saturation and color back, but it's not much. So if you're outdoors and you're using your ND2 filter, that's one stop. That's like changing your aperture one position or changing your shutter speed one position or changing the film one position. Notice it doesn't do much, but look at the picture of the house. And now look at it, you can see a little bit more. Let's come a little closer, look there. 
Now look, we get a little bit more detail. That's because it's actually stopping the light that's hitting the sensor in that case. Now we're gonna go to a two-stop neutral density filter and look, the sun's coming back out. This is important. That small change between the, between the clouds going over the sun and not has increased our exposure value by a minimum of two. We're at a 15 to 17 right now, depending. So if we started off at a 13 to 14, we're now at a 15 to 17, but check out this neutral density filter of a two. Now, it's difficult to compare, but you can see, you can actually see more of the picture. Look how it's, it's like one of those magic things. And when I come over here and actually put it right on top of the camera, let's put it right over here, you can actually see quite a bit more of the, of the actual image. That's what we're going for right there, okay? Now, let's compare that to an ND8, okay? ND8 is a three-stop neutral density filter, and here we go. Look at that. Look at how much detail is being brought back out just by using the ND8. And we put it over the whole camera. We're now beginning to see a properly exposed image. However, this isn't exactly what you would need. Look now how even in the bright sun at 1 500th of a second, we are still slightly overexposed. The way we would manage this with our TL70 is to change to a smaller aperture. Now, of course, you can't see this, but guess what you can do? You can do this. You can pull out your cell phone and then set it up and get a preview of what the image would look like just by putting that ND filter right over top of it. And then you'll be able to tell real easily whether or not the camera is going to be able to take a good image. Okay there, friends, I'm back. So what did we talk about? Let's put it all together. Let's put a bow on it. We talked about using a neutral density filter in order to help us make the scene darker so that we can do one of two things. We're either going to shoot properly exposed at our smallest aperture because the scene like this is so bright that using the TL70 or any film camera would require us to stop our aperture down to a very small, small, almost pinprick to the smallest that it could get in order to make sure that this comes out properly in focus and exposed, excuse me. Or if we were in slightly dimmer light and we wanted to shoot with a wider aperture in order to show a shallow depth of field. You see, that's what these lenses will help you do with your TL70. They go on very easily and they work quite well. But let's put our let's put it into perspective a little bit. The neutral density filter you're going to want to use most of the time is the ND8 when you're in bright daylight sun like th like this and you're going to want to be around an F16 or an F22. Remember to adjust your aperture softly so that the aperture is on the same axis as the lens. Remember, it's a rotary or dial aperture. So if you don't adjust it softly, the aperture may not be on the same axis as the lens and that will cause vignetting. That's okay when you want to create something a little bit more emotive or creative, but if you're going for portraiture, definitely make sure that you adjust the aperture so that it's in the natural rest, the natural detent for the camera itself. By pairing a neutral density filter with a small aperture that's been properly adjusted, we're going to give the camera the opportunity to create a better exposure. Now, the beautiful part about the neutral density filters is they do not affect the way the camera meters, and we don't want them to. The electronic eye on the camera is still going to meter the scene as it sees it which is great because we want the metering to stay consistent and we want our brains, our software, to tell us when, and we, sh when we should and should not use a neutral density filter. Guys, those are my tips for today. I hope that you have found them helpful. I'm Robert Hand with Robert Hand Photography. This was important enough to get out to you right now before I'm heading out to photograph a wedding. I wanna thank you for watching and remind you that I will catch you on the flip side.